Okay, this how-to video is going to discuss IPC2581, which is a new manufacturing output. So the way we would generate this data is using file export IPC2581. Now this is a not a new standard IPC2581, it's been around for quite a few years, but it's something that's been reintroduced over the last couple of years um, to kind of output a single XML file, XML file output. There is a website we can look at, so ipc2581.com, that will start to talk about who the members are and what the purpose of the, the new standard is. Um, and it's, it's, it's trying to kind of get away from using, you know, very, very old technology using Gerber data to generate manufacturing when we can now export a lot more intelligence in the data into a single XML file. So it's worthwhile having a look at this website. So to output one, so it's file export IPC2581. And then we've got different options up here for the kind of the versions. Uh, there's different properties. So if we wanted to include some of the, the component or net level properties, maybe things like IDF properties and stuff, we can start to include that information here. And that's also available from the from the net level properties. And once that's done, we can go to the export option and we can pick which kind of functional mode we want to export, which would include more or less data. Let's go for a full package this time. Um, so I've got the film creation tab, which would give me the standard output options for my artwork films. So I've obviously got silk screens, the copper layers, some solder masks, some solder pastes. There is a domain selection also that allows me to, to have control over these artwork films, whether they're going to be an artwork output using the Gerber data, the 2581 PDF format, or in the visibility tab. Once that's defined, I can go to the layer mapping edit and I've got to basically define each film and tell the, the the export file what it's going to include so obviously output outer copper layers for the for the outer balls we've got inner copper layers documentation layers we've got solder mask solder paste and some just miscellaneous image layers for things like um, silk screen or maybe just the board outline once that's done and we're set up we're happy we can just click on export and this will then go and generate a single XML file output um, so the export's finished. Uh, we get a few warnings about I've got some uh, some components that uh, maybe I've got some parts that aren't placed in this example. But I can then close the output, and if we go to the job directory, you can see I've now just got a single XML file output, you know, 50 meg, that I could obviously open with a with a text editor if I wanted to go and look at the XML file. Now another one of the the big advantages of the IPC data is I can also now import that. So what we'll do is we'll just um, let's just set this up. So I want to look at my top layer, I want to do a comparison, so I'm just going to set a slightly different colour so you can see the difference. Um, let's just make a couple of changes to the routing on, on this design, because what we're going to do is we're going to import the IPC data that we created, and then we can do a comparison to the data that we had. I mean, ideally you'd have like a revision A and a revision B, then you could import the IPC data for the revision B and compare it with the data that you had in revision A. So there's a file import IPC2581 now, um, so we can browse for the file that we created. And then we'll just import that data. So what's that, what that imports basically that then gives us a compare button. So we can start to compare layers with the data. So let's just turn everything off for now. So if I turn on the, the film layer, so this is the actual data in my board, and then I can compare that to the data in the IPC film. So you can obviously see the differences I've made change in the tracking. So you can very, very quickly go through and see the differences on different layers to work out what you're actually doing and whether you've made changes in a design. What this does when it imports the data is it generates some new classes. So if you go to the manufacturing area, there's now IPC underscore and then all the film names are specified in here. It's also useful that you can purge the imported IPC data once you've done, and that will then go and get rid of all the, the imported IPC layers.